Insulated water bottles are very nice to have, but there's a huge difference in price. The least expensive brand we'll be testing only cost $8 and the most expensive one $40. Is there really any difference? Well, let's get the testing underway and we'll find out. We'll first test cold temperature performance. We'll then test hot temperature performance. We'll test the durability of each brand. We'll cut open the bottles and see how they're constructed. Finally, we'll see if the toughest brands can survive the Farmabago. At a price of only $7.99, this Bubba brand water bottle is the least expensive brand we'll be testing. Stays cold, leak proof, BPA free, guaranteed for life, made in China. The Bubba is very light at 273 grams. At $11.59, this Contigo is the second least expensive brand we'll be testing. 24 hours cold, 10 hours hot, 20 ounces, made in China. The Contigo weighs about 50 grams more than the Bubba at 324.7 grams. At only $14.65, the third least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Coleman. 31 hours cold, 11 hours hot, spill proof 24 ounces, made in China. The Coleman is the heaviest yet at 407.7 grams. At only $18.99, the fourth least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by East Rim. Keeps liquid hot or cold, double wall and vacuum insulated. Extra wide mouth for ease of use. Responsibly made in China. The East Rim weighs 327.7 grams. At a price of only $19.91, is this aquatics brand? Eco-friendly personal hydration. 12 hours hot, 24 hours cold. Double wall vacuum insulated. The Aquatics holds 21 ounces. Responsibly made in China. The Aquatix weighs 334.7 grams. At a price of $19.99 is this Thermo Flask brand which holds 24 ounces. According to their website, it keeps beverages cold for 24 hours and hot for 12. Made in China. The Thermo Flask is the heaviest yet at 408.2 grams. At a price of $22.95 is this 22 ounce Hydrology brand. Vacuum insulated. 18.8 stainless steel. According to their website, it keeps beverages cold for 48 hours and hot for 12. Made in China. The Hydrology weighs 381.4 grams. At a price of $23.72 is this Brita brand. Unlike the other brands, this one has a built-in filter that's supposed to last up to 40 gallons. The 20-ounce Brita bottle is supposed to keep beverages cold for 24 hours. The Brita is made in China. The Brita weighs 391.6 grams. At $27.95 is this Clean Canteen brand. 10 hours hot, 65 hours cold. 20 ounces. Won't shatter. We're going to test that. BPA and toxin-free. Made in China. The Clean Canteen weighs 359.8 grams. At $29.95 is this 18-ounce Yeti Rambler. It's actually dishwasher safe. Made with 18-8 stainless steel. Made in China. No information on the website regarding how long this is supposed to keep products warm or cold. The Yeti Rambler weighs too much for the scale, so I weighed the thermos and the lid separately. Altogether, it is by far the heaviest yet at 562.4 grams. At a price of $31.99 is this Under Armour brand. 24 ounce, vacuum insulated bottle. Keeps cold 20 hours. Made in China. The Under Armour weighs 424.8 grams. At a price of $32.95 is this Hydro Flask brand. We'll be testing two different Hydro Flask containers. This one has the standard mouth. It claims colder, hotter, longer. 21 ounces. The Hydro Flask uses Temp Shield double wall vacuum insulation. Our unique insulation keeps your drink cold or hot for hours so you can stay refreshed for any adventure. Cold for 24 hours, hot for 12. The Hydro Flask is made in China. The Hydro Flask weighs 333.1 grams. At a price of $35.95 or $3 more than the standard mouth is this Hydro Flask with the sport cap. 21 ounces. 24 hours cold, 6 hours hot. Made in China. The Hydro Flask Sport only weighs 310.7 grams, the second lightest. At $39.99, the most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Stanley. They claim their water bottle is the easy clean. 25 ounces, 11 hours cold, 36 hours iced. Stanley water bottles have survived minus 70 wind chill, speeding bullets, 4,000 foot drops, category five hurricanes, built for life, lifetime warranty. The Stanley is dishwasher safe, made in China. The Stanley Classic weighs 482.3 grams. So if weight is a big factor, the Bub is the lightest at 273 grams, Hydro Flask Sport second at 311, Contigo third at 325, East Rim fourth at 328, and the Hydro Flask with the standard mouth fifth at 333 grams. In the first test, we'll compare how well each brand performs for keeping water cold. I placed a six gallon container inside a fridge and then adjusted the thermostat that caused ice to form inside the top of the container. The water is between 32 and 33 degrees. After filling the containers, I place the containers upright and space them several inches apart. The ambient temperature inside the shop is very close to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It's been right at 30 minutes, so let's use a thermal camera and we'll see how well each of these containers is insulated. 
Wow, a lot of heat loss is taking place with Bubba. The ambient temperature in the room is approximately 80, but the outer layer of the Bubba is in the low 60s. The Contigo is doing much better with most of the efficiency loss coming from the cap on the container, which is around 67 degrees. The Coleman definitely seems to be doing the best so far with a small amount of loss at 71 degrees from the cap, but the container seems to be at ambient temperature. With the East Rim, the lid is at 68 and the top of the container is also pretty cool. So the East Rim doesn't seem to be doing as well as the Coleman. Aquatix is definitely doing the best so far. The lid is over 70 and the container seems to be doing a terrific job containing the coolness of the water. The water in the thermo flask definitely seems to be warming up faster than the Aquatix. Very much like the thermo flask, the hydrology seems to be transferring heat into the container through the lid in the top two inches of the container. The Brita is definitely warming up more than some of the other brands. Clean Canteen is definitely doing better than average. Wow, the Yeti is definitely warming up quickly. The lid as well as the metal near the top of the container is quite a bit cooler than most of the other brands. The Under Armour seems to be doing fairly well. The top part of the container seems to be slightly cooler than the rest of the container. The Hydro Flask Standard Mouth seems very similar in performance to the Under Armour with the cap and the upper metal portion slightly cooler than the rest of the container. The Hydro Flask Sport seems to be performing about the same as the Standard Mouth Hydro Flask. The Stanley definitely seems to be doing a pretty good job. It's been right at 24 hours, so let's see which brands did the best at keeping the water cold, beginning with the least expensive brand, the Bubba brand. The dual insulated Bubba really struggled at 72.1 degrees Fahrenheit. The very affordable Contigo did much better at 58.7. Coleman, which is also very affordable, did even better at 54.5 and moves into the lead. East Rim really struggled at 60.6, so Coleman is still in the lead. Aquatix did an amazing job at 52.8 and moves into the lead over Coleman. The Thermo Flask was quite a bit warmer at 56.7. Hydrology is at 57.1, which isn't nearly enough to take the lead from Aquatix. Brita is at 57.5, which isn't quite as good as most of the other brands. Clean Canteen did really well at 52.9, but that's not enough to take the lead from Aquatix. The Yeti Rambler, which is by far the heaviest, also struggled at 57.9. Under Armour did better than average at 55.7. Hydro Flask with the standard mouth did really well at 55.4. The Hydro Flask with the sports mouth did identical at 55.4. And the most expensive brand, the Stanley Classic, did the best at 50.6 degrees and takes the lead from Aquatix. So the most expensive brand, the Stanley Classic, came in first at 50.6 degrees. Aquatix, which cost half as much, came in second at 52.8. Clean Canteen third, Coleman fourth, and both of the Hydro Flask tied for fifth. Since Bubba and Britta aren't designed for hot contents, I'm leaving them out of this next test. I preheated the Pyrex container that we'll be using to fill each of the containers. Also, the water is at 207 degrees Fahrenheit. All the containers have been empty and sitting for 24 hours to make sure that the inner part of the thermoses are right at ambient temperature. Sometimes I'm in a hurry and I just don't have time to preheat the thermos. So this next test will let us know which container provides the best pour and go performance. If you don't preheat a cool thermos, the thermos will immediately cool off the hot beverage that you're adding to the thermos just a little. So in the next test, we're not going to preheat the containers, but instead, add water that's near boiling point and then place it in a freezer that's set to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit for four hours. It's been right at four hours, so let's see how each brand performed beginning with Contigo. The water started out at 207 degrees Fahrenheit and is now at 129.2, a loss of almost 78 degrees. Coleman did quite a bit better at 136.7, a loss of only 70 degrees. East Rim didn't do quite as well as Coleman at 132.7, a loss of 74 degrees. Aquatix did nearly identical to Coleman at 136.6, a loss of 70 degrees. Thermo Flask is at 132.2, a loss of 75. Hydrology is at 143.8, a loss of only 63, and moves into the lead. Clean Canteen is at 134.8, a loss of 72. Yeti really struggled at 119, a loss of 88 degrees. Under Armour is at 135.9, a loss of 71. Hydro Flask with the standard mouth did the best yet at 150, which is a loss of only 57 degrees, and moves into the lead. Hydro Flask Sport is at 150.5, barely edging out the Hydro Flask with the standard mouth. Stanley Classic is at 134.4, a loss of 73 degrees. So the Hydro Flask Sport came in first with a loss of 56.5, Hydro Flask Standard Mouth second at 57, Hydrology third at 63.2, Coleman fourth at 70.3, and Aquatix fifth at 70.4. So will preheating containers change the outcome? Let's find out. With the lids off, the water was stored inside the containers for 24 hours, and all of the water inside of each of the containers was right at 72 degrees. The freezer is 112 degrees colder than the water, so let's do some testing. 
After five hours inside the freezer, once again, the Hydro Flask Sport came in first, only losing 16.5 degrees. Hydro Flask Standard Mouth came in second at 16.8, Hydrology third at 18.3, Coleman fourth at 19.9. The exact same order for the top four brands as in the previous test. Preheating really helped the Stanley as it finished in eighth place last time and this time finished in fifth. In the next test, we'll test the durability of the bottles by dropping them 36 inches onto this angle iron. Each container is full of water. The Bubba survived the impact with minor damage, which we'll check out later in the video. Contigo also survived with a very small dent. Stanley is a tank and experienced very minor cosmetic damage. Eastrim also did very well in this test. The Aquatics experienced a pretty large dent. The Hydro Flask experienced a pretty large dent too. Hydrology held up really well with only minor damage. Brita experienced a rather large dent. Clean Canteen experienced a large dent as well. The Yeti is also a tank and experienced very minor cosmetic damage. Under Armour experienced very minor damage. The Hydro Flask experienced a pretty large dent. The Hydro Flask Sport also experienced a pretty large dent. The Stanley experienced a moderate sized dent. Let's drop the bottles on the lids to see how they hold up. Bubba has more bounce than an overinflated basketball. Well, the Bubba survived, but it definitely caused quite a bit of damage, especially to the lid area. You can see the lid broke, but it's still functional. Things did not go well for the Contigo as it began blowing water out everywhere. Well, the Contigo did just fine with the blow to the side. It actually totally destroyed this thermos and it no longer will hold water. The plastic at the top of this thermos just totally disintegrated. Things went a lot better with Stanley with just a little water seepage. As you can see, a very small crease to the side of the container. The little mouthpiece did come detached, but I think that can be pressed back into position. The East Rim survived without any issues. The East Rim is also very durable. Very small crease to the side of the container. The lid did come partially off. Went ahead and unscrewed the lid and screwed it back on and it's sealing up just fine. Things went poorly for the Aquatics as it began spewing water everywhere. I'd definitely say the Aquatics falls into the light duty category. Unfortunately, the lid on this thing is broken, as well as there's quite a bit of damage to the side of the cooler. The clean canteen held up just fine. Other than a little bit of cosmetic damage, the clean canteen held up very well. Quite a big dent in the side, but other than that, this container still holds water. The cap on the thermoflask held up just fine. The thermoflask also held up very well with a crease to the side, but other than that, the thermoflask still holds water. The cap on the hydrology lid shifted out of position and a little water leaked. The hydrology experienced a little bit of cosmetic damage and the lid is on a little crooked. I don't think there was any damage to the hydrology. I'm gonna put the lid back on and see if it still holds water. Okay, other than a little bit of cosmetic damage to the hydrology, it held up very well. Other than a small loss of water on impact, the cap stayed intact. It actually held up very well with just a couple of dents, but it still holds water. Other than a small loss of water on impact, the cap stayed intact. When it comes to durability, the Yeti is up there with the Coleman. This is a very durable thermos. No damage to this thing other than a very small crease in the side of the container. Things did not go well for the Under Armour with quite a bit of water loss upon impact. Unfortunately, the Under Armour did not do very well with regard to the cap. The cap did get cracked and is no longer going to hold water. Hydro Flash survived the impact without damage. I don't think I've ever seen a Hydro Flask that didn't have a dent in it. This one actually held up fairly well with a very small dent compared to some of the other brands, and it still doesn't leak. The Hydro Flask Sport also held up really well. Other than a little bit of cosmetic damage, the Hydro Flask held up very well. The Stanley did just fine on this test. The Stanley Classic claims to be durable, and that proved to be true. Very little damage to the Stanley Classic with just a little cosmetic damage to the side, a very small crease. Also, no damage to the lid, it still holds water. The Hydro Flask did very well in this showdown, so let's cut it open and see how it's designed. Wow, there's really not much to the Hydro Flask. As you can see, there's the inner part of the container, as well as the outer skin, and there's an air gap between them. This is a very thin aluminum outer layer, and it's just not gonna be very durable. However, it does a terrific job of containing cold as well as warm temperature. The Yeti definitely did not perform nearly as well as a Hydro Flask, and it seems to make sense once taking a look inside. There just isn't as much of an air gap between the inner container and the outer skin. The inner part of the Hydro Flask is about 0.44 millimeters. The outer skin is about the same at 0.45. Wow, the Yeti is nearly twice as thick at 0.88 for the outer layer. The inner layer is quite a bit thicker as well. Up next, let's see if any of the containers are Farmabago tough. The Farmabago will be traveling at approximately 50 miles per hour when it makes impact with the containers. 
Standing claims your bottle survived a minus 70 degree wind chill, a speeding bullet, 4,000 foot drop, and a category five hurricane. But the question is, can a Stanley bottle survive the Farmabago? All I can say is that's a lot of damage. The Stanley was definitely not up to the Farmabago, but then again, none of these water bottles could withstand the fierce force of the Farmabago. Thermo flash didn't do too well either. The lid did stay on though. However, this container is definitely ruined. Obviously the wheels did not pass over top of the Brita or else there'd have been a lot more damage. Unfortunately, the Under Armour is in pretty bad shape as well. So which brand is best? I think that really depends on what you want. The Hydro Flask is a very light thermos and it did a terrific job, but it's definitely not as durable as some of the other brands. The Stanley did a great job as far as cold temperature performance, but then again, it's very expensive and it's a pretty heavy thermos. The Coleman seems like the best value overall. It does a terrific job with regard to cold as well as warm temperature performance, and it's extremely durable. I was really surprised at how well the Hydrology did. It also did very well in most of the testing and is very durable. All the videos on this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. I read and reply to as many comments as possible. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.